Let's have a lesson on this piece now and uh, follow the lesson for free and just pick up some tips. But if you're interested, I do have an edition of this work and there's a link for that in the description. So in my edition, I've decided to go with Satie's uh, uh, original notation. So there's no bar lines in the music. And don't let that throw you off. It's just that, you know, the note values are the note values. You don't really have to think about um, that the fact that there's no bar lines, you just play the music as it's written and you just go through the piece. He just wants a little bit more freedom from the hierarchy of the beat and just like a straight through kind of um, forward motion through the piece. Very relaxing, of course, but straight through with, without like a, a ton of emphasis or, or structure within, even though the, the rhythm itself is very regular. Um, there's just no hierarchy to the beat and so he's just done away with that. And I think not having the bar lines um, naturally encourages that kind of 
feeling. You're never seeing that first beat all the time. You're really just aiming for the next phrase. And as you can also see, I've, I've added all the original phrase markings too, just to make sure that you are carrying yourself through the phrases um, as naturally as possible. I've also included all his original uh, French terms and translated them for you in the score. So you can, you can consider that, whatever you want to make of those, those um, terms throughout the piece. I'm very influenced by, like this is originally for piano, and uh, I'm very influenced by the, the piano performance. And uh, I don't, I didn't want a lot of guitaristic effects like harmonics or even, even slurs, hammer-ons and pull-offs to some extent. I use hammer-ons and pull-offs for the grace notes, but nowhere else in the piece. I kind of just want this kind of like um, gentle kind of touch, you know, like a, like a piano would do it. And for a very consistent touch and just to avoid the kind of guitaristic um, um, slurs that, that and, and hammer-ons and pull-offs throughout the piece. So very much um, adhering to the original, except for the key signature, of course. Besides that, not much has to be changed except for some of the three note accompaniment chords get changed to two notes here, well, almost all of them, um, to make it work. But besides that, it's pretty much exactly like the original. I, I really just copied out the piano score, transposed it, eliminated the doubling octave of the accompaniment, and then that's pretty much it. It's pretty much just the original. It works really, really well. So besides that, um, there's not much to say. It's like, it's really melodically based. So you just want, really want to follow those phrase marks and bring out that melody and, and have that accompaniment. Just continuing through the whole piece, trying not to draw too much attention to it, but having it kind of be the cushion that you float on top of in this piece. Besides that, let's just go through it and we'll talk about a few things. There's a couple of fingering things that I, uh, fingering alternatives that you can consider. Uh, my addition reflects what, what I've been doing with it. So like I said, I've been, lots of additions, slur, but I've just, I'm shying away from that because I, I think it sounds a little guitaristic. That's the first spot where I, I chain, you know, you have to play around with the voicing a little bit. But it works fairly well. This is mainly a repeat. Most of the time I'm doing a rest stroke with my thumb, just on the, whenever the E's are there, just for some stability in the right hand. It's kind of a touchy piece because it's slow and it's very spacious. Um, so I just want lots of security there so that the feeling of moving my fingers onto the accompaniment is just very um, secure and I can be light, but without worrying about hesitation or, or nerves or anything like that. So this section, um, uh, you can translate this to very shiny or radiant. It's just it's a little bit more of a brilliant section. Um, I've decided lots of additions um, cross string this and play it in in f fifth position. Um, I just found like mixing the the grace note slurred notes with the cross string notes just didn't sound right to me, and it really drew attention to the fact that. The guitar sounds really different when you do one thing or the other. So I wanted to keep it really consistent. And so I'm, I'm reaching out my third finger here. And because the bass note is also an A, letting go of the A a little early is not desirable because you lose some sustain, but I think that the bass note A really picks it up. You, there's only so much sustain you can get out of that first string anyway. So uh, I think it works fine. 
If you don't like it, um, feel free to use your second finger. Um, if you don't like the three, four stretch, um, use your second finger. Again, I don't think it really matters. Um, I do it just so that I can try to pretty much reach it. Some people might be able to actually hold the A while they do that. Uh, I have to kind of just let it go at the end of the sustain. You can play it as a cross string up here, but again, I, I just found the mixing of the two different ways of playing grace notes to be a little distracting to the piece. And I'm being super, I mean, usually I wouldn't care and you can totally do it. Um, lots of great additions uh, do that. I just don't, I'm, I guess this music is so much about simplicity and sound that I felt like I wanted to keep it really consistent in this particular case, but that's just me. Um, feel free to mix it if you like doing that more. So going through that section the second time through it. Then we have this questioning kind of line. I find it pretty secure to go one, three, or one, three, four. And it is an A sharp. I know it sounds a little funny at first, but you do get used to it. And then you're kind of in that one, three group. So I think that's a pretty secure fingering. point that's all of the material of the whole piece the rest is there's some fragmented a fragmented section on the second page here but but it's all the same material some different indications by him um, to play things a little bit differently but like the notes are all the same at this point so we go back to this section repeated material so nothing new to talk about except <laughs> mistakes on my part here this is the same material but it's just fragmented and he's saying like on the edge of thought so it's it's I'm just kind of going a little bit more Ponticello and just whispering through it a little bit more he doesn't complete the phrases just kind of like hinting at the previous phrase, almost teasing you with it, or like it's like a lingering thought on the edge of thought, or like a lingering thought of the melody from before. Back to this section. Oops. the same rising line here it says apply yourself so I just dig in a little bit more it's a little mesmerizing it's easy to make mistakes in a way um, and then he says step by step or like I would call that almost just like hesitant so I try to just you know, like get a little bit more blocky with it as if I'm not sure if that's what I want to play, but I'm going to play it confidently anyway. And then we're just finishing it up. This section again. the tip of the tongue again I think it's just like a, you're just trying to kind of like um, hint at the memory of the piece and then it just ends kind 
of just into nowhere. It's a real famous piece, um, heavily played, and um, very... It's very pleasing. I, I was going to say audience-friendly, um, but it's not necessarily. It depends on your audience. Um, it's very peaceful, very spacious, and almost formless, although there's definitely a form to it. Um, not meandering because it, it's focused in a different way, but um, it's just lots of, of musing on that, on that melody and those phrases and lingering of those, of those melodies and motifs through the whole piece. So just keeping it just really meditative from, from start to end is, is the challenge. And because it's so spacious, um, you just want to be very secure and careful. But at the same time, I think it works incredibly well on the guitar and nothing of huge difficulty other than control of the texture. <laughs> 